The arm structure follows that of Iowa from Kuka, which is a 7DOF arm. 7DOF arm are often referred to as redundant because target pose takes only six variables to specify, while we have seven independent joint angles to control to achieve a target pose. Let's take a look at this demo. A 7DOF arm can move its elbow along a circle while keeping its end effector pose fixed. This is not possible with a 6DOF arm. Next, actuation system. All joints use stepper motor as actuator. For reduction, we mainly use a harmonic drive with reduction ratio of 30. In addition to harmonic drive, joint 1 and 2 uses a pair of timing pulley to further increase reduction ratio by an factor of 2. Joint 4's timing pulley is only for power transmission. Joint 6 uses a custom gear train instead of harmonic drive to reduce weight and ensure the arm have a skinny wrist. Two types of circuits are used. First type is the stepper motor controller on the back of each motor. Another is the main controller. All these controllers communicate through CONVUS, which is only two signal wire, can H and can L. On the top side of the main controller, we have a step-down converter followed by a regulator to produce 3.3 volt to feed ESP32 and can transceiver. The 3D Wi-Fi antenna is directly driven by ESP32. These three mezzanine connectors are for interfacing with SYNC SOM. The Zinc SOM is still under design and will not be demoed in this video. On the back side, we have another buck converter and an Ethernet physical layer transceiver for Zinc SOM. A Type-C USB connector and a USB to UART bridge is for programming ESP32. The Stepper Motor Controller PCB is modified from Pong Jerway's Dummy Robot project. An STM32 chip receives motor commands from main controller through a can transceiver and runs a motor control algorithm that involves the use of PID and FOC to control motor through two motor drivers. The control algorithm requires motor position as input, which is acquired by magnetic encoder. Finally, a buck converter followed by a regulator to produce 3.3 volt from PCB input voltage to feed all the ICs on the board. We have also designed a dashboard for interacting with the arm. On the upper left are the joint angle sliders. To change value, you can click or drag near the edge, or directly input a number, or use arrow keys. More intuitively, you can also directly click on a link to open up its associated slider. A transform control has been attached to the end effector. Through dragging it, you can specify a new position or orientation for the end effector. The dashboard will then solve an inverse kinematic problem in the background to determine joint angles needed to achieve the specified end effector position or orientation, and then apply the joint angles to the model. This workspace sphere is for workspace visualization. By changing its radius, you can visualize the workspace layer by layer. And it is not just for visualization. By clicking on one of these small balls, you can move the end effector to it. Finally, you can keyframe the end effector pose, interpolate the pose with a spline curve. You may also adjust number of interpolated pose along the spline curve, and then have the model move to each pose along the curve in sequence.